In the previous video in this series, I was showing some test software that I'd written to test the uh, RAM on my Z80 computer project. And uh, all the testing went well. I extended the test to um, different types of testing, sort of walking bit, checkerboard, that sort of thing, for both banks, the entire um, RAM space, including the video RAM. And it uh, works perfectly. I showed an issue that uh, had cropped up um, if the supply voltage was lowered and uh, that can be resolved by adding some load resistors to the DRAM address lines. And I will be adding that, at least the footprint for that, onto the next version of the main board. But uh, memory test programs are all well and good for testing the system but they get a bit boring after a while. And one program I quite often write for testing systems like this is Conway's Game of Life. And if you're not familiar with it, it's a simple set of rules that are used to update uh, what are referred to as cells on the screen. And really the cells, just each individual character position in this case. And depending on the state of the neighboring cells, a particular cell will either live or die or come to life. And it uh, results in some interesting patterns um, for such simple rules. And the main thing with it is it's very processor intensive. In fact, it's very system intensive. It's a lot of work for the CPU. It's a lot of work for the RAM and all the system decoding everything is given a really good workout because for every iteration and update of the screen, the system has to check um, for each of the positions on the screen, that's every single character on the screen, it has to check the condition of all the surrounding characters. And so you can imagine that's quite a lot of work for each iteration of the, um, the update of the screen. We'll have a look at this software in a few minutes. I just want to demonstrate the uh, program first. Okay, so I'll send the program from the remote terminal and it is, um, compiled to run at address A000. So I'll just go and send the file. So the file has been downloaded. I'll just start it running. And it results in this sort of pattern on the screen. So we've got some text at the bottom. The text doesn't interfere with the uh, updating um, of the cells kind of layered on the front as is the iteration counter and you can see that the um, machine actually works quite well it's quite a powerful machine and it does update fairly quickly if you've ever written this um, type of program you'll know that trying to get it to run at a decent speed is quite difficult just reset and run it again each time we start it it comes up with a random uh, set of starting cells and it actually has two different versions within the same uh, game. Uh, you notice it died out fairly quickly. Sometimes it lasts a long time, other times it dies out fairly quickly. And that's the nature of the random starting uh, cell um, positions. Um, but oh, I've got a second version that um, it introduces um, spawn cells from the outside. You can't see them, they're kind of introduced from the outside of the screen top and bottom and it keeps the whole thing going much longer it kind of behaves like a much bigger system the reason this dies out so quickly is because it's quite a small um, cell count so it's not that many cells to interact and again it starts it starts off with random um, setup of cells but this version introduces spawn cells from the top and the bottom of the screen and it tends to keep the whole thing going for much longer. So we'll come back and look at this some more later on but for now we'll go to the PC and have a look at the source code for this program. So over at the PC we'll have a look at the software. Before we get started um, I was asked which compiler I was using in the previous video and um, it's this one. So I'll leave a link in the description. I'm not affiliated with the uh, supplier of this. It's just a, um, a compiler and a simulator that I particularly like. Um, it's got all the usual features, but as I say, it's not just a compiler. It's quite a good debugging tool as well. 
in as much as you can, um, if we assemble the code for debugging, we can actually step through it. And we can either step through it, as you'd expect, one step at a time, or set a fixed rate. So looking at the, um, the, the software, what we basically have is a fairly simple setup. This is why this game is quite useful for testing systems. It's quite easy to write this. And I think this version took me about an hour to write. So we have this weird thing at the beginning where it's got to jump from um, address zero uh, up to a base address. And that's simply because I've compiled this to run at an offset address within the machine so I can load it through the serial port uh, onto bank uh, one uh, user RAM. So it um, expects to run in this case from a 0, 0, 0. So it starts off as a few equates uh, as usual. The only one that um, might raise some questions is this one. So we've got buffer start um, equated to buffer offset. And this is one um, thing with the compiler, it's a bit of an oddity that I can't do this direct. What I really want is to um, locate two buffers. We use um, double buffering on this program. And um, so what we do is at the end of the code, we have this, and in this case, the dollars uh, just means the current address as far as the compiler is concerned. And then we can use this to locate the start of the buffers so they follow on directly from the code. And each time we change the code, we don't have to change the address of the buffer start. And uh, we can then generate the uh, buffer pointers. So the way this program works is it has two buffers and it uses one to hold the current cell configuration. And then the other one is used to um, copy the new configuration to when each of the cells is being checked in the first buffer. It then sends the contents of the new buffer to the screen. It swaps the two pointers over and then it repeats it. So it doesn't have to copy the buffers around. It just uh, uses them alternately. And um, it can use the previous one that was updated as the source for the new. Okay, so it uh, starts by creating some what we'll call blanks. And this is just to make sure that um, before and after each of the buffers, we don't get any weird behavior because of anything that already exists in RAM and we don't have to do any band checking, it just speeds the uh, program up. We've got two versions, that's what this started thing is all about. So we can call the two different versions. We then reload the buffers, although they're loaded during compilation, we might be um, re-entering this. We might call it more than once as we did uh, just now. So we need to reload the um, buffer pointers. We then generate some seed values. So we've got a random um, generator for the uh, cell's starting point. And it's kind of a multi-step random number generator. So the first thing we do is we generate two 16-bit seed values. And to do that, we use the, um, the refresh counter within the Z80 because it's obviously asynchronous with what we're doing. So that could have any value. And that's then used to generate two seed values. And that's then used further on to generate some random cells. We've got a random uh, cell function. And that uses the random function which is this function. So it's quite a straightforward function, but it's very good at generating random numbers, especially if we have the uh, random seed values to start with. Then goes on, clears the video, creates the starting cells using the random number generator. And those cells are then in the first buffer and it sends that buffer to the screen. In fact, it doesn't just copy the buffer to the screen because the buffer only contains zeros and ones. So it has to interpret the zeros and ones to uh, printable characters. Otherwise, we just get nothing or nonsense on the screen. So that's um, fairly simple uh, function. It just uh, goes through each of the cells. It always uses the same buffer pointer. Remember, the buffer pointers swap over uh, after each iteration. 
and at the end of this it layers on the title of the game and the iteration count. So once it's done that it moves on to the actual cycle of updating the uh, cells. So the starting point for that is to load the buffers into some registers. Load the count, that's how many cells we're going to update. And then it checks for each cell, it checks the surrounding cells. So as you can see, there are eight cells around each cell and it has to check every one for every single cell on the screen. That's what I meant about it being very processor intensive. It's a lot of work to do for each iteration. And you have to write this game in a fairly efficient manner, otherwise it will run very slowly. So for each cell, we check all its neighbors. We use the resulting uh, value that we obtain to save a zero or a one, depending on the, this is basically the rules. So you can see how simple the rules are for this game. There's not much in it, but it creates very complex behavior. Saves the current cell to the current destination buffer, and then it jumps back to the start. Copies the buffer to the screen, and it just keeps repeating. So you can see how straightforward this is. The so few helper functions, we've got a delay here. Um, that's used to slow the game down because it does run a bit faster than you might expect. We've got the function to swap the buffer pointers. Buffer to screen we've already looked at. We create one or two versions of the, uh, the blank lines that allows us to generate the uh, spawn cells I was talking about or to not create them. We've got the random cell filling function and then the rest are just helper functions for printing um, text on the screen or printing characters or strings on the screen. And that's all there is to it. So you can see a very simple program, um, but it does do uh, quite a lot in terms of allowing us to test the, uh, the processor. So we'll go back to the machine and uh, have another look at the software running. So I'll restart the program. It is, of course, still loaded into RAM. And I'll start the version with the extra spawning cells. And as you can see, it does run surprisingly quickly considering the amount of work that it has to do. But one thing I mentioned with the design of this machine was that I was very careful with all the timing of the individual circuits. And um, I always tend to do that when I design um, circuits like this. It's good practice and also it's uh, good fun to try and maximize the performance of the machine. But one thing I mentioned was that you can actually increase the clock speed of the processor because the normal bottleneck in a system like this is going to be the DRAM. But because we were so careful with the DRAM timing, and again, if you buy the book, I'll go into a lot of detail about that, um, but the DRAM timing was really optimized for a high performance. Not really because I intended to run this particularly quickly, but just because it gives the most stable behavior for the machine. What I'm going to do, at the moment it, the board's set up to run the Z80 at 2.5 megahertz. But what I'm going to do is put a jumper on the board so that it will run at 5 megahertz and you'll see that it still runs. But if you look at the rate at which it's updating the screen for this game, the count's at the bottom, and then we'll compare that once I've uh, increased the clock speed, and you'll see just how uh, powerful this particular machine can be. Okay, so all I've done is lifted the clock input pin to the Z80, and I've hooked it up to one of the available clocks on our clock um, divider circuit, uh, which is running at five megahertz. So we'll power this back up and hopefully it will still run. Let's wait for the tube to warm up and it has indeed come to life. So we'll see if it's running, which it is. And what we'll do now is I'll send the um, program we were just looking at back down to the machine. So that has now downloaded and we'll try running it again. And again, I'll run the um, extended version of the game You can see now how much faster it's running. If you look at the count, it is obviously going at approximately twice the speed. 
So you can see that this um, machine, although it's a discrete design, is capable of running at uh, quite a high speed. And as I said, if you're familiar with writing this particular game, then you'll see that running at this uh, refresh rate and this update rate is actually quite impressive for what is a relatively simple device. So I'll dim the lights and you can watch this for a few minutes if you want to. And in the videos that are coming up shortly, I will be finally getting back onto the repair series.